Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will just thank God and, and just magnify His name. He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. He is just amazing. God is good. I want to share with you on today... Many have asked the question, how do I know that I'm looking at the right time? How do I know about my time? And so, it's so important that we, we understand biblically about knowing our time and when is it the right time to make a move? And so I'm going to share with you from the scriptures based on Old Testament and New Testament. Over in Second Chronicles, the second chapter, and this particular word, I absolutely love. Because it teaches us in so many ways. When we look at Second Chronicles, the second chapter, something stands out. And I, I want to go even further. And we're looking at Solomon. And we're also going to look at a couple of other examples. Here, it says, And Solomon determined to build a house for the name of the Lord and a house of his kingdom. Here, he is placing himself in a position to be in agreement with what God wants. When we put ourselves in agreement with the will of God, then work begins. It's time to make a move. We cannot fully move until we set ourselves in agreement with what God wants to do. Moving without being in agreement with him is moving outside of his will. And so, and, and then we also must know which portion we're working on. And so I'm going to say this, that we don't automatically agree with everything. Mm -mm, we don't. And he doesn't give us everything to work on at one time. And so we cannot emphatically say, I agree with everything because you don't get everything at one time god gives us things in a proportionate manner and so here solomon set himself in agreement to do this work now when we back up and we look at the first chapter in second chronicles here he is setting himself in agreement again with the will of God. If we could recall, God spoke to David, his father, about the secession of the kingdom, also of the building of the house of the Lord for worship. And so it was already what God wanted to do. The individual has to now come into agreement in alignment with what God wants to do. And so the second chapter of Second Chronicles begins to introduce Solomon as king. Verse 1 says, And Solomon the son of David was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and magnified him exceedingly. Then Solomon spake unto all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in all Israel, the chief of the fathers. So Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for there were the tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But the ark of God had David brought up from 
Kerjath Jerum to the place which David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Moreover, the brazen altar that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. They were seeking guidance on what to do. Now, as we also take a look at history, when it came to the building of the house of the Lord, this was the desire in David's heart to build a house. No more intent, but to build a house. And the Lord said to him, it is well that this is your desire, but it is going to be done through your son, through your heir. And so under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, David began the architectural process of the house of the Lord. And he also began to put into place provision for this. He also is an example of being given the release, being permitted to go ahead as he found himself in agreement with the will of God. And so if you are one that are asking, when is it my time to move forward? When is it my time to get to work? When we determine within ourselves to be in agreement with the will of God. And once again, he will give us, now he might give us the whole, we might see the whole vision, okay? But he gives it to us in proportion. So you can get a glimpse of the totality, uh, the ministry, and you might see the building filled with people, you ministering, you might see the giving of outreach ministry, you might see all of these things. Yet and still, we work on it in proportion, in seasons. The number one key is to find ourselves in a place that we set ourselves in agreement once we learn the will of God to be in agreement with him. That's the time to move. Now, we cannot think one thing and say one thing because that is not alignment. Neither can we do vice versa. We can't do one thing, think one thing, say another thing. That's not alignment. But we must be in total alignment, body, mind, and soul. Your spirit man must get an understanding. Scripture tells us over in Proverbs, the third chapter, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And so as I set myself in agreement with him, this is the power of agreement. As I set myself in agreement with him, then he's going to direct my path. So let's go over to that scripture text really quickly, and I'm going to come back to Second Chronicles, the first chapter, as we're talking about the power of agreement. Over in Proverbs, the third chapter, beginning at the fifth verse, and really all of beginning at the first, this is the power of agreement. Begin, let's start at the th first verse. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So as I agree with God about his law and keeping his commandments, then I'm going to reap the benefit of that. And so if we would start to find ourselves in alignment, exercising the power of agreement with God, then we will begin to know that it is our right time to move forward and to work. 
But once again, if I don't agree with the will of God, I really cannot say that I am doing the will of God if I don't agree with it. So we, we must line up. There should be no doubt. Our faith should grow continuously day by day. Agree with what God is saying. Now verse 3 says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. When I do this, when I agree with what this says, it says, So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. So I want to agree with what God said. Once again, if you're tuning in to the balance of life, I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is an honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And we are still in intercessory prayer with you and for you without ceasing. Just asking God to lead us by the Holy Spirit on how to pray for you, what to share with you as we come and from Tuesdays, Wednesday and Thursday with our radio ministry. Today, we're asking a very profound question. How will I know the right time to make a move? How will I know the timing of God? It begins with, first of all, we must have faith in God, believing that God is, believing that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believeth in him, except him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, so we begin to believe that in our heart, we confess it with our mouths, and we believe the scripture text that has been written based off of this one thing, that all scripture was written by the inspiration of God for our benefit, for our counsel, for our wisdom, for our knowledge. And he gives us a revelation of him by the Holy Spirit. And so I must move into a place that I am in agreement with what God is saying. And so we ask important questions. At least we should be asking important questions. What am I doing today? What am I doing in this season? Those are some very important questions that one should ask of the Father, believing by faith that you will receive a response. So if you are wondering, well, what? how do I know when I'm supposed to make a move? How do I know when I'm supposed to do something? How do I know when I'm supposed to stand still? Well, we're going to ask some questions. It is okay to ask the Father about what you're doing day by day because it is going to bring him honor. It is for the kingdom of heaven. And so day by day, I want to know what I'm doing. I also want to be made aware of what am I doing in this season? Where should I be in this season of the journey? So that I can get to the fulfillment of the vision that he has given unto me. Once I begin to examine and think about what God is saying unto me what he is giving me to do. He's going to lead and guide me by his Holy Spirit. As he leads and guides me, I then want to believe by faith what God is saying. And I want to set myself in agreement with what God is saying for me to do. Once I set myself into an agreement with what he is saying to me, then that is my time. Let's look further in the Word of God as we're sharing with you from 2 Chronicles. We looked at the second chapter, then we backed up to the first chapter, and then we proceeded to go over to Proverbs, the third chapter. 
the fifth verse over in Proverbs third chapter says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Verse six says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That means that when I do what the word says, when I trust him with all my heart, and I lean not to my own understanding, and I acknowledge him in all my ways. That is saying to me to trust him as he is leading and guiding me. Set myself in agreement with the guidance that he is giving me. And as I set myself in agreement with him, then yes, 100% yes, he is going to direct my paths and as long as I follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit I won't go astray because I'm being guided let's go back to second Chronicles let's take a closer look now at the first chapter even further because here Solomon and the people have come before the Lord and they have built an altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. That's verse 6. And if you're just tuning in, you're tuning into the balance of life. We are sharing a word of faith with you from the scripture, and we're answering a question, knowing the right time. How do I know the right time for me? And I want to say this, my time is not your time. We're not on the same time. Now, there might be times and opportunities where we work together and we need to be on the same time. But the time he gives me is not going to be the time he gives to you. But what is the ultimate goal is that God gets all of the honor, God gets all of the glory, and his will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the ultimate goal that we should have. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. And so we're not a, in a race against one another. We are not in competition with one another. What we are doing is we are doing the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. You have a job to do and so do I. But our goal is the same. Now, as we look at uh, verse 7 in Second Chronicles, the first chapter, it says, In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Well, the reason why God appeared to him at night and asked him that question is because he submitted himself in the position and posture for God to talk to him. He determined that he wanted to honor God. And so he offered a sacrifice unto our Father which is in heaven. And so now it, it, it was it was a it was an invitation for Solomon to give to God to speak to him. Just like God gives us an invitation so that we can hear him, so that he can speak to us, we have to be open for him to, to do the same thing. And so we want God to talk to us. He talks to us by the Holy Spirit. So here God is saying to him, In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and has made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. Okay. The promise of David. God made David a promise. Solomon is saying, let your promise be established. He's also saying, I agree with the promise you made David concerning my reign. And so he is in agreement with what God said. Let's read that again. 
Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established. So once again, God spoke a word to David. And Solomon is in agreement. He agrees with that word, which now he is also establishing. He is in agreement with God. And he is saying, let your word that you gave to my father let it be established because I agree with what you said. Now over in, let's look at uh, 1 Kings 10, 28. Because here it says that he was, he was made king. So let's look at that. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. This is a part of the building process. And so he agreed with what God said to his father. That's what we have to do. We have to set ourselves in agreement with what God said concerning us. Let it not depart from us. But let us hold dear to our hearts. Solomon says, For thou hast made me king over people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? That was what God wanted for him. God wants someone who is going to ask him how to shepherd, how to, how to cover, how to feed, how to protect his people because we all belong to God. And so once again, Solomon is setting himself in agreement with the will of God. And then once again, when we get over to the second chapter in Second Chronicles, first verse, And Solomon determined to build a house for the name of the Lord and a house for his kingdom. He set himself in agreement with what God wanted done. Ask yourself, have I set myself in agreement with what God wants to do? Because that is what is important. Making sure that we are in agreement with what God wants to do. Not what we want to do, but what, what God wants to do. Do I agree with God? I'm not worried about agreement, agreeing with others. I'm not. I want to have peace with God. And so I want to agree with his will for my life. If you are wanting to know where the foundation of building this house comes from, that you can take a look at that over in 2 Samuel. The seventh chapter. It says, And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. Another word for curtains is tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelled in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel, out of Egypt even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? Now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, 
I took thee from the sheep cot, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou winnest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused these to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee. So remember we talked about Solomon setting himself in agreement with what God said to his father David. That is the connection. So we would look at Second Chronicles, the first chapter. And the eighth verse, and it says, And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. So we, we line that up with what is spoken in Second Samuel. The 12th chapter, beginning at the 12th chapter. So let's read that again, and then we're going to go further. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. We're talking about power of agreement. When do I know it's the right time for me to move? Verse 14 says, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever according to all these words and according to all this vision so did Nathan speak to David. So what now when I get over to Second Chronicles the first chapter and, and Solomon is talking to God as God visited him after he made a sacrifice with the people after he gave an offering and God said what is it that I will ask of thee? Solomon establishes the very fact that I set myself in agreement with your will. You spoke a promise to my father, and I agree with your promise. As I set myself in agreement with the promise of God, with the word of God, now I can move forward because I know his will. And I agree with it. We're going to carry this conversation on tomorrow. Because there is so much more that we want to share. And there are other examples in the word of God. That we want to share with you to help you with that question. And so I want you to begin to pray. I want you to begin to just seek the Lord about his will for your life and ask those questions it's a day by day thing when you want to know what God will have you to do today that is a way of setting yourself in agreement to do his will now we know we have some things that we have we're obligated to do but God, is there anything specific you want me to do today? Because I want to agree with what you want me to do. And as I set myself in agreement with you day by day, it is actually working towards the vision that you gave me. And then also ask the question, where am I supposed to be in this season? Reveal it to me because I want to be in agreement with you. Prepare your hearts and your mind. We're going to go in this further tomorrow. 
if the Lord allows us to, if he prolongs his return, and if he does not shift me. We're going to talk about this again. Have a blessed day on purpose because you are.